And yo, welcome to another episode of Analyze This. Uh, my name is Tunji Andrews, and with me always on the show is my co-host. Honey Ogundei. We're going to be talking about Nigeria's film industry. Uh, the, it's, it's a massive industry. It's one of those ones that I think I should have gone into, but I really don't like to act a fool in front of people. So I kind of was shy to go into that. But it's making a lot of money, right? So um, people are making money from the actresses, the actors, the, the film producers, the script writers, the light, sound. So it's, it's a massive industry right now. And we're trying to track the money, right? And you know that's what we do here. We try to analyze how it works. But I agree with you. I think the, the film industry in Nigeria is one of... Blown up. Yeah, I think beyond that, like, it's just an amazing industry. It's doing so well, both, like, economically, but financially, but also just in selling a great image of Nigeria outside the shores. I really want to analyze, like, where's the money? So is the money, like, really in the box office takings? I know online has played, like, a big role in that as well. So, like, we've seen a lot of these movies as well moving to YouTube with people selling digital rides, there's subscription businesses, there's video demand. And it's been great to see how they've monetized as well on the, on the you know, on the digital f- mm-hmm. um, front. Fine. But how it's also, in a way, disrupting the industry. Uh, you know, Shout out to Alaba. Right. But, yeah, maybe like, you know, if for those of us who were not even going to Alaba, but we're buying it and we're renting it and that whole industry has gone away now because you can kind of click on yeah. on, um, on any of the digital platforms and, you know, you're, able to get, yeah. and you're watching it and they monetize through advertising, etc. But I always wonder, does that really trickle down to producers and directors and actors and actresses? Of course, at the end of the day, the, the, the general idea is that the person who, um, the executive producer of the movie needs to get paid somehow. So yeah. he needs to find a way to monetize. Great though, um, corporates are coming into the movie industry now. And I'm glad to see- Is that great? No, 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 let me, let me explain why. You know, cause you know, you watch movies, you know, foreign movies and you see them advertise things like cars, you know, whiskey, wristwatches. Oh, yeah. And in Nigeria, it's beginning to happen. With- Piracy is still like a huge issue even till today. So when no, you are shouting it's, at it's Alaba, not- some people are also complaining yeah, about that. Yeah, right? but because- I, I, have a, I have a friend, she's a movie You always maker. have one friend. She's a movie maker. She, she was buying petrol at the petrol station. She yeah. was in front of me. And then, you know, this guy is doing bootleg. Yeah. Was trying to sell her movie to her. Right. And how did she cope with that? No, she, you know, the guy was like, auntie, movie. And then she goes, ah! And, she, and the movie had not been released. So she was really pissed. She came out of the car really raking. The guy ran away, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been a huge yeah, part of it. We, we need to see, like, more more effort done around copywriting and trademarking, especially in Nigeria, and being able to really effectively protect people who invest a lot in sort of producing movies mm-hmm. and in bringing great films to life, telling great stories. And then it must be so heartbreaking to just see that being hooked on the road for, like, 200 bucks. You, really and someone like you will still be pricing it. We have a guest on. <laughs> we have a guest on the show, and um, we're going to be talking to a, um, a scriptwriter, movie producer, movie maker, CEO, everything basically in the industry. You can tell he has that movie maker yeah. look. You know, so, you Genesis know. Kwan is going to help yeah, us exactly. break it all down. down. Right? So we're going to get to the bottom of the past, what's currently happening, happening and, and what is the future, the future of for, Nollywood? Yeah. Because Nollywood is like number. Is it number two or number three? Number like, three uh, in it, terms of output. It's number two, I think. I think you find that, you know, Hollywood is first and then... Bollywood is second. No, we'll find out when the guest comes (laughs) on, right? (laughs) All right, so we have with us on the show uh, a movie producer, writer, um, movie maker, basically someone that encompasses the entire industry and that can tell us, uh, you know, where the money comes from, from the top to the bottom. He has that whole je ne sais quoi all around. He'll be stealing my lines, but carry on. I I said it first, you know, you heard it from me, je ne sais quoi. All right, so we have uh, Jay Franklin with us in the studio. Welcome to the show. Hello. Yeah, so you can see he's all dressed for the role. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how is the dress? movie industry working right now? Uh, money being made, people getting rich. You know, you see their first movie, you can tell that they were hungry in this part. Then they grow five, six, seven, eight, ten movies later on. They're all growing chicks and, you know, driving Porsche cars. Let me ask, are you talking about the actors or the producers now? Both, both, you know. Actors well, um, you can't separate them because the actors get to work like every other month, oh. while the producers get to take it one film at a time. Oh. So with the actors, which is becoming a problem, you can have an actor being on two sets at the same, at the time. same time. So it's a huge problem, and people are working hard to try and see if you can make if they can make that mm-hmm. stop. 
because it's affecting a whole lot of productions. Mm, right. You understand? So if it's the actors, yes, they can be doing like three, four, five films in a month. But for a producer, well, unless you're running a factory type <laughs> setup <laughs> where you have to churn out projects without concerns for where the first one you've done yeah, has got into, you understand, as in the status of that one, then you can be churning out projects every other month. But for a, a, a producer who has like a long term plan and who wants to build a catalog that can stand its ground anywhere else in the world, then I think you have to take it project by project. Mm. But the thing about, about our content sometimes is there's always that, um, what's the word? We always have that jive about the quality of the content and the storylines. Sometimes it feels as if it's the same thing. There's a, you know, somebody happens, somebody cries, somebody dies. Well, you somebody need, you need to, to understand person. where the industry is coming from. Right. Okay, the industry started as a bunch of creatives coming together and say, okay, we can do this. Mm -hmm. But for this to happen, we need certain people to make it work and be profitable. Mm -hmm. And these certain people are the marketers. The distributors, right? Yeah. We could call them distributors because yeah. they weren't tagged distributors at that at point. The they were time, called yeah. marketers. marketers right? And these marketers were basically electronic sellers. Okay. And most of them had shops and businesses. Shout out to Wicca Road. In um, Idumota, Alaba, Onichan, different places. Now, why? Because they had this huge stock of video cassettes right. that they needed to dispose of and oh. and that's why it was tagged home video okay so these creatives needed a, a, a platform or a means with which to, to distribute product this product oh. and that was a perfect avenue so they would, they would work on it they would finish it so and then the creatives it. made the film gave it to these guys who dubbed it into the states and sold them as home and where produce. did the money originally come from was it the creatives that now, were sponsoring the creatives it? actually sourced for funds oh, okay. to make the film. It got to the point where the creatives saw that these guys, because they are traders, wanted quick return, oh, quick turnout, okay. speedy, churn it out in the factory mode. So like it wasn't like they are quality. selling a product. Okay. They just wanted to run it like that. But for creatives, it goes through a process, it's a creative process. Right. It's called show biz. There's yes. a show and there's a business. Right. Now, if you tip the scale, one is going to suffer. And then if you skip the process, the product is going to suffer. As with every product, if you keep feeding somebody garbage, they get tired after They get one. tired. After a while, they're like, enough. And they're like, place. you know what? We're done. I think I was one of those people, and I'm still trying to, to come back because I remember the, the deep voice. If you kill a civilian, it's a whole different ballgame. But if you kill an army general, it means war. We went to go and watch the movie. The army general had nothing to do with the movie. He just died and the movie went on. So I was like, no, I can't do this again. <laughs> I used to love that like, when in the soundtrack when they would sing the whole story of the movie. Like, the whole <laughs> thing of those were yes. those were some that, that was during the era of the That's like in the nineties, yeah. right? You understand? Even in up to two thousand and eight, nine and thereabout. Now you should understand that technology plays a whole lot I'm a Ted Cross, I get in it, yeah. this industry. Not so, much. so first it was video cassettes, video yes. tapes. Yes. And so then knows those very well. they made the transition to disc, mm -hmm. video CDs. Now, the video CDs transition to D DVDs. Mm -hmm. But you know the truth is, you have to learn to separate the market. There are yeah. three demographics, the 5%, the 10%, and the 85%. The 5% understand the difference between a CD and a DVD. Right. The 10%, they do. But the 85% just know it as a disc. Yes. Yeah. So at the early stages, they were selling these films as VCDs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you had VCD players. Now, when they upgraded to DVDs, these VCD players have been replaced by DVD players. Mm -hmm. But your DVD players can play a downgraded disc, which yeah. is a VCD. Mm -hmm. right. So they still can't tell the difference between a DVD and a VCD. But that but didn't affect the content, right? It's the same it, content. It did affect the content. Right. Because with your VCD, a guy makes a film, your VCD can only take about 40 minutes of video. Okay. Oh. So that was why they were breaking it into, into parts. Part one, so part two, they put part, part one, two. part two, part three. It was actually supposed to be disc A and B like you used to have with this DCDs. This is like a big aha moment. Wow, that's why. Wow. Do you understand? It's supposed to be, you know, with your regular films, you have disc A and disc B. Mm -hmm. right. And with DVDs, it's still one disc because that can take four hours yeah, of well, content. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? So they kept separating it like that, but for the average man on the street, he doesn't know the difference, so he's used to having A and B, and 
the Ebo traders realized that, man, this is a smart market. So they may name it part one and part two instead of this K and, and B. Okay. So and the average man who is buying it looks at it like, ah, so where's the part two? So <laughs> those who started making films and selling them in DVDs were running at a loss. Okay. Because oh. they, the marketers call it like, nah, it's not complete. Where's part two? <laughs> but the entire film is in that it's one disc. That one, yeah. So everybody oh eventually went that way. So people, oh, the, so the, the, the pirates <laughs> and those who wanted <laughs> to continually make money off people's projects stayed with the VCD. So it got to the point that these productions get, uh, kept getting worse and bad and people got tired of seeing the same actors. And then someone who is a creative gets tired of what they're doing and makes another film which may be just some uh, um, epic type movie of some village setting and some warriors when, no, and then it yeah. sells, and then everybody yeah, like, oh, this is the new template, and then they jump on it. Right. So that was what made the industry suffer up to the point where people say, you know what, we're tired. So everybody kind of went on a break. I saw even yeah. the actors and actresses were like, we're not we're tired anymore. of this. We're tired. So Bad. where are we today? What's so going the industry on now? is just transitioning. It's in a transition right now from where it was. I like to call it Nollywood 1.0 and this is Nollywood 2.0. Okay, so what's going on in 2.0? Nollywood 2.0 is basically the new generation generation of filmmakers. Yeah. You have more creatives coming into the industry. More right. creatives are trying to do work that can resonate with How people. How are these new creatives getting funded though? Now that's the problem. Mm. Um, the truth, as with everything in the world and especially in Nigeria, you find out that those who know how to do have, have no access, access yes. to money to do and it. those that have access don't know how don't to do, do it yeah. so the industry like i said earlier is called show business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some people you focus on the show both. yeah and they forget that it's a business right for me i had to learn i'm a businessman i'm an accountant and i've always been a creative i've always told stories i'm not well, you're a special breed it's very rare to find someone who's both creative and business minded. oh yeah. well yeah. you have to learn yeah, and like yeah, tunji is yeah. like that he's a rapper and an economist but it's rare you so you have a lot more creatives. We're going to take out the show very soon. <laughs> Watch <laughs> out! <laughs> you have a lot more creatives, and they don't even want to dabble into the business. business, right? Yeah. Because for them, oh, let me just create this project and let it go do its thing. No. Let me explain the transition from DVD to cinema. Right. Now, with the DVD market, it started dwindling, and and it's as a result of one thing, which is constant and will ever be in place change mm. technological change yeah. africa magic has seven nollywood channels Crazy. dedicated to nigerian True. and african content so tv made it possible for people who were buying this disc for 300 naira to just watch it on tv for free and now basically what now even crashed it more was you now have this lower level cable platforms which still has at least four five nollywood channels right and those things are very affordable so access was basically crashed so, so, access everybody access could get access. Access. so why would i spend money buying the disc when i can easily just pay for that my is network a law of disruption basically because you just basically made those vcd guys slightly irrelevant business. but a whole new platform was open online with youtube now there's a model that works that you upload this content online for free but Every 10 minutes, there's an advert. And they click adverts, monetize. Do you understand? YouTube so views. that's how they monetize. Right. And producers were making money out of it. So that went on. And then platforms like Iroko and the rest looked at it like, okay, what if we have this package in a proper platform and have it available for those in diaspora and for those even here? Online became a huge platform you for consumption for for, and for um, producers to make money from while that was happening, people like Ben or Bruce saw the need for a cinema because that culture was big in Nigeria before Body died. So he revitalized it with the Silverbird cinemas and that sort of sparked a new trend. And then how about we bring Nollywood films into it? And then they did with EJ, um, Chinese's film that had Omotalan and Genevieve. And at that time, they had just eight screens. And the film did about 60 million naira. Someone like AY came and made a film, 30 Days in Atlanta, and broke the entire box office with 172 million naira. So does that money get down? Does it trickle down all the way to the producer? And to now, there's it? a sharing formula. formula. Okay. So oh, the okay. exhibitors, the cinema houses, 
they have a percentage on the opening weekend, which is 50% okay. of what the film makes. Right. While the producer gets 50%. But from the producer's court, there's also what you called, uh, what's called the um, entertainment tax and some other small, small Nigerian bits. Nigerian government college entertainment tax. Uh, well, they do. Oh, they be amazed. Oh, wow. Just very quickly, just just talk talk us about piracy and copyright. Is that still an issue, or is that something that's yeah? Away? Piracy is still happening because uh, people there are all forms of piracy right now. Mm. Like wedding party suffered huge piracy. It was on YouTube for free. From there, people downloaded and put yeah. it on DVDs and. So what needs um, to be done about that? Is that the government that needs to step in? Well, the government it? needs to play its own role in the sense that they need to put checks, and this check has to go up to the point of those selling the DVDs on the street. So if you're caught selling pirated DVDs... There needs to be a hash fine. They must arrest you and trail it to the place where you got the the source. The source, And right. then from there, correct it. Because if they don't, people are still going to suffer. But the piracy is not as huge as it used to be back mm -hmm. then when it was all DVD and mm -hmm, DCD. Mm -hmm. And so what does the future hold? Like, what are you excited by? What What is... Now, I'm excited about uh, about the opportunities Nollywood 2.0 is offering because um, lots lots of creatives are now given the opportunity to tell their stories. Yes, there's still a battle going on because a whole lot of people are saying, oh, what genre sells? Mm -hmm. And people are saying, comedy sells. Yes, comedy sells, but like it was in the first generation of filmmaking in With, Hollywood. With um, jazz and... You make one particular film, it's successful. Every other Everybody person jumps. jumps so, like now, romantic, like so, rom coms are like. Yeah. Seems to be big. So, um, um, AY came in with 30 Days in Atlanta. It was a huge success, and everybody saw, oh, it's a template. And then Somebody he did a trip to Jamaica, London. and then everybody's jumping on that comedy P. And Tunji has his own coming out. Should should comedy, days. comedy, comedy, comedy. Decisions. I don't have a problem with comedy, but right. let it have a story Something and let's, let it be balanced so that at the end of the day, but with Nigerians and with watered down copying Content, format. Yeah. You find out that you keep doing a weaker version of the previous of the one and then office, it's yeah. becoming a problem because on the long run it's going to affect the cinemas. Yeah. Cinema goers because you go to the cinema and you see one bad Nollywood film, you're going to come out saying, I'm not going to see any Nollywood film again. When do you think we're going to actually see a classic? Because obviously whoever made so Godfather... Classics. Violated is a classic to me. Yep. For example, <laughs> my film, um, Dina, a whole lot of people see it like, oh... Yeah, that was an amazing film. This, this is an amazing film. And guess what? Just yesterday, someone called my attention to Davido's Snapchat that he saw it on Emirates Airlines and he Snapchatted it and put a caption, Mad Movie. And I was like, okay. Because it's showing on airlines right now. And it, the, oh, so that's okay. another outlet, right? Outlet well. for yeah, monetization so, um, too. Um, it's screening in French cinemas. It's um, in um, five airlines right now. Wow, that's in awesome. In flight entertainment, mm -hmm. Air France, Emirates, South African Airlines, um, Ethiopia and the rest, they are um, about to license for the November belt. And it's going to get distribution in North America soon. So that's what we great. are trying to do is just create avenues. So you're making money like in dollars and pounds, aren't you? Uh, that is it the shows. plan. But, but what, from what I hear, the, market, the industry is still very fragmented. They are still pushing boundaries to try and make sure monetization works. And still the structure is not... Right? Yeah, they're still yeah. structuring. Yeah, but still I think the potential is there. We have at least the creatives now, yeah. the business guys. And yeah. we're seeing even a new crop of talent from the actors and the actresses as well. True, right? So it's not true. the same guys. Younger, fresher faces. Yes. Real talents, not just someone with... Um, yeah, people that have trained. I have friends who yeah. come to like acting school proper, and Proper train actresses, and really proper come actors. Back. Really, so really it's good. not, you know, it's definitely not like, you know, before, when if you say you want to be an actor everybody will just laugh at you and think that you're gonna you know but these days it's like a, it's a prestigious as career as anything yeah. it's a real it's a real industry there's real money it's being a made hard job, though. Yeah, i just want to say thank you so much for coming on i feel like i've definitely learned a lot like there were so many aha moments i'm like Too yeah this like, is why oh, we get, I get it now one two <laughs> six i've been wondering about so many things i think the future is super bright for the for the um, and now i feel a little bit more compassion towards the industry because I, I i always just felt they were just trying to just frustrate us with Terrible yeah. content, but now I kind of understand why, and I'm like, I'm, re I'm really sorry, guys. Group hug, big hug. <laughs> so I, I'm sure there's people at home feeling better now that you've given them a hug. Um, but I think it's just exciting. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's a whole world of you know Nollywood coming out there with with guys like Jay working behind the scenes, yeah. really hard to bring out great content that we can all watch and be proud of. Um, listen, if you want to talk more about Nollywood 2.0 or the film industry in Nigeria. 
the hashtag to use is analyze this or you can reach us at Indani TV on all the social media platforms. If you want to chat to me or reach me personally, it's at Honey Ogundei on all the social media platforms, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, uh, and sometimes YouTube as well. Uh, but if you want to talk to an actor, economist, and sometimes rapper, you can reach Tunji. How can they reach you? Tunji Andrews, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, everywhere. YouTube too. Yeah, YouTube channel yeah. is up and running. And how can we reach you, Jay? At King J, just the letter J. Franklin, Franklin with a Y. Thank yeah, you guys. Hurt. Until next time, have a great week.